Wow, Chris Pick's here today with Elijah Boyd, a uh, Libertarian candidate uh, for a House seat in uh, Madison County last time and getting ready for uh, another race up there. Um, uh, on here to talk with me today. Um, how, are, how are you, Elijah? Thanks for coming on, man. Oh, thanks. I appreciate you reaching out. Um, I'm doing good today. All right. So, I'm glad to hear that. Um, so, uh, how are you doing? Tell me- Oh, I'm great, man. I can't complain, you know, and if it did, you know, nobody would pay attention to me anyway. Um, so t- tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, what 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 makes Elijah a libertarian? I mean, uh, as opposed to a Republican or was you a Republican and switched to, um, you know, libertarian or was it a, an evolving thing or how did, that, how did that come about? Yeah, you know, uh, when I was growing up, my family was all Republicans and I didn't really know. Um, and until I was an adult that actually my family was all Democrats um, until Roe v. Wade. And, you know, like most voters, they were a single issue voter. And I had no idea. I wasn't really interested in politics uh, too much. Um, I started kind of getting interested around the, the Tea Party movement, 2012, Occupy Wall Street. Um, both of those uh, movements kind of resonated with me. Um, and I read Frederick uh, Bastiat's The Law uh, and about what the, the appropriate use of law is and came across Ron Paul and uh, his tirade against the Fed, the, uh, that is the Federal Reserve Bank. And, yeah. um, you know, I just, you know, I if I had known anything about politics, I may have been always been a libertarian, but you know, as a as a kid and a young adult, I just just took on what my uh, you know my fi- family had done as a as a Republican. So yeah, yeah it's funny you mentioned uh, Dr. Paul and his uh, war he did against the Fed. I mean, so so few people really know what the Federal Reserve is, and uh, uh, you know what it encompasses. I mean, it, it would make people just um, riot if they knew exactly what was going on with the uh, Federal Reserve. I mean, I'm not rioting yet, but maybe I'll <laughs> <I'm not> do. <laughs> you know? uh, so yeah, it, it's probably the single biggest institution that evolves. You know, it's all of our money. The our reimbursement for what we work for goes down when the the value of a dollar goes down. Everything that we buy is hinged on the price of a dollar. Um, you know, we pay all of our taxes in it. We buy all of our, all of our health care in dollars, and we also buy all of the wars that America uh, fights with dollars. And, um, you know, none of that, none of the abuses of government would be possible if we had sound money. Um, You know, you um, mentioned something about taxes, and, uh, you know, we just had a strong song about um, how... Uh, how the rich men of Richmond, uh, um, uh, so that resonated with. Well, your audio cut out or mine did. Phone calls. Phone calls. Um, what, what, what is, I mean, I guess all libertarian, there's different factions of libertarianism. Uh, what, what do you stand on, 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 on taxes? Uh, um, uh, you know, should it be something that, how it what used to be where the government levied the state for the taxes and the states was responsible for coming up with, with the money. Um, how should we go about funding um, our government? And I guess the biggest question is, and that was a follow-up question, uh, what do we do about spending? Because that's where our, our problem lies in. It's not the money that we're bringing in. It's the spending. Yeah, I, th- I think uh... – Maybe it was um, Rothbard. Uh, I I forget the the uh, the thinker that philosopher libertarian philosopher that was saying it, but um, yeah, if you just look at what we spend, it doesn't matter how much they tax, how much they borrow, uh, how much they print. If you just look at what we spend, you know that is the real cost of government. You know they will they will fund it somehow. And, 
you know, that's basically how you measure the size of government. And wow, do we spend a lot of money? Uh, I'm not big on taxes. Um, I realize that there are, you know, many programs of the state that people depend on. Uh, but, you know, if we was to limit it down to, you know, one, one method of taxation, they, you know, there would be people that gamed it and people that couldn't. Do you mean like a, a flat tax or a national ta uh, sales tax on items or? Um... Well, when, when you said that, uh, you know, maybe the, the United States government taxing individual states rather than, uh, you know, what was it? Whatever the, was it the 13th amendment when they could t levy taxes on individuals? No, the 13th was the, um, um, when they, uh, 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 slavery outlaw, outlaw slavery. Um, hmm. I think it was the ah, uh, something tells me it, it, I want to say 19th, but that doesn't sound right. I mean, if you, but the first people don't realize it's the first national income tax that ever took place, mm -hmm. um, was in 1862 during the Civil War. And Lincoln enacted that, and that was the first one to pay for the war. And then it was, I think, what 1912 or something, and it was like a one percent tax. Uh, I mean, it was just something that you you wouldn't dream of today. Um, and now, what are we a forty three percent tax bracket with the highest up there? I mean, you know, how much more money? And that's not counting hidden taxes like you know your driver's license, your car tag, uh, mm -hmm. your property taxes. Uh, you know, there's so many more worth the taxes in every gallon of gasoline. Every gallon of gasoline. Um, you know, our past legislature this time, I don't know if you're aware of this, despite the fact that we had a record surplus of money came in, coming into our budget that we could, you know, spend money, they tried to tax every water meter in the state. Hmm. They tried to put a tax on every phone in the state. Cell phone and house phone. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, and 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 I understand that, that, that we're in a um, society today that wasn't like it was, you know, 300 years ago where, uh, you know, we, 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 have, we have to have some form of taxes. But, uh, um, you know, back to the spending thing, um, or, or let me say this before I touch on a quote. Uh, Benjamin Franklin once said, um, um, I forgot how he said it, to paraphrase it, but to tax a man one-tenth of uh, – one percent of his income is criminal, or, or, or paraphrasing that, um, you know. Uh, I mean, is, is there ever going to be an end in stopping this until uh, we are like a European nation that that eighty percent of our tax money goes to taxes and the government takes care of us? Like, I. I see hope that we will not be. Um, there's, you know, if I was, <laughs> we were talking about where the government would go in the next 20 or 30 years, 20 or 30 years ago, you know, we probably wouldn't see where we're at now. So, um, you know, maybe I don't have the best vision of what could be possible, you know, don't underestimate, um, you know how power will corrupt and grow absolute power corrupts absolutely yeah um yeah. i think there's a lot to be you know optimistic about there uh, are people that are concerned about the growth of uh, of government and um, all of the things that they're trying to do that should be uh, private you know, private works should be, <clears throat> um, shouldn't be like public goods. You know, we have in, in Huntsville, we have several music venues, um, you know, that are closing down the privately owned uh, bars and, you know, other dance halls that used to uh, be thriving here. And, you know, it's like, oh, well, we would have never got these big, 
music acts if we didn't have this and like okay that's true but you are literally you know you gather money with taxes um they've added you know a tourism tax to all the hotel sales it's like no other venue gets to basically gather up all of the the prosperity from bringing in acts to town you know it's we yeah, live well, in community. sharing, in that, sharing yeah. in that in that wealth i mean it, that probably sounds you know socialistic or whatever, but we should all be sharing in that you know bringing that to town uh you know i've kind of got you sort of you off on national stuff but i know you know we're here and be here in local um what what's your opinion of um, our state government right now, uh, the job that they're providing for the citizens of Alabama. I think they could do a much better job. It seems that every solution they've had grows government, uh, increases spending, and we're getting a terrible return for our tax money in the state of Alabama. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't feel like we're making the right progress for freedom and individual autonomy. <clears throat> uh, I guess it was, you know, we, we have some small wins. There was a uh, medical marijuana act, you know, it's. Um, I was very surprised too, that we, that in this state that, that we got that passed as conservative as Alabama is. So, but yeah, you're right. Well, um, you know, I, I'm hopeful that conservatives, <laughs> wake up to the fact that conservatism should be the restraint of government, not the growth of. Um, <clears throat> but uh, that yeah. medical marijuana act grew the state. There's going to be taxes. There's there's uh, going to be a license yeah, board. There's going to yeah. be favors like that are built in to all of the production and distribution channels of it. And just like is, ABC board. Yeah. And uh, patient registries and you know if it's it's still illegal at the federal level we're still um you know if we're gonna alabama's gonna keep a patient registry is that something that the federal government can come and um sue the state for you know and get a, a sub subpoena for all that information and that's not how i would think alabama should be protecting the citizens um, you know, let me ask you this, uh, um, from see what a libertarian standpoint is, and and I, I, do, I have a lot of libertarian leanings, uh, uh, I really do. Um, uh, uh, do you speak of marijuana? You know, I feel that our, our drug laws are so draconian. Is it not time that that we legalized marijuana? And I mean, I know you don't like taxes, but put a tax on it where, uh, that. You know, you could fund so many things with that. I know people, professionals uh, who don't smoke marijuana, but said, hey, if, you know, if it was legal and I could go buy a store, you know, I would smoke on occasion. I mean, but, mm -hmm. but that, I mean, why, why are we so far behind, you know, European nations that we can't do that? Well, you're asking well, I mean, from a libertarian <laughs> perspective. And uh, I've been told many times on the Internet, I'm not the one true libertarian. Okay. Um, legalization does have its merits, but um, you know, it seems that we always have to negotiate to taxation or you know some other type of uh, regulation or restriction on it. And you know, if if it's going to be a massive tax on uh, marijuana sales, that money's going to go somewhere and it's going to be spent on something. And that could probably, that's probably going to be the growth of government. And it's going to make it more lucrative for um, lobbyists and people. So you're, you're, you're against it? I am for legalization and I'm against increases in taxation. But, but yeah, you can't, but you're going to be able to legalize it and not be able to tax it. Well, I mean, if it's taxed like tomatoes, okay. Yeah, I'm not talking about putting, you know, I'm talking about like a pack of cigarettes, you know, you 
buy a pack of cigarettes and you pay a three or four dollar tax on it or something like that. I'm not talking about a, a huge, um, you know, it's a huge tax. Huge. Well, it's what really big? What would you say? I mean, if you're going out there and you're buying a pack of 20, say, it's, you know, like a pack of cigarettes, 20 joints, what would you suggest the tax on that would be? Zero. But I mean, so you don't think it should be taxed at all? Like we said, I mean, uh, so like, you know, like marijuana is not, you know, my child issue, you know, my, you know, my biggest thing is we need to stop the growth of the government and we don't do that by giving them more money. I I understand that. But my my thing is, is is with marijuana is there so many is we would say you'd are, we would save so much money and cut government by reducing the load on the criminal justice system. Uh, people that were sitting in prison or people just going to court uh, for simple possession, uh, you know, the court costs stuff like that. If it was legal, and if you could legal and tax it, I could find so many things that we could actually cut taxes in other ways. It, if the bill was there. Yeah, I'm going to vote against or you know, I'm going to vote for not putting people in jail for it, not, you know, destroying families, um, putting more, you know, more burden on the taxpayers for incarceration and enforcement efforts. I would totally vote for that stuff. But if it was my opinion and if it was a perfect world, I wouldn't I wouldn't be growing the uh, government through taxation and especially like a sin tax where you're talking about maybe four four dollars per pack or you know whatever unit of sales but but uh, but a tax like this right here doesn't affect everybody it only affects the people who want to use it uh, okay I, so, I, I don't... go ahead i'm sorry it it, it definitely um creates a relief valve for for folks that need to use it uh, you know, have for whatever reason. Um, I, I think there's many uh, conditions and ailments that it is a relief for. Um, well, see, a guy gave me an answer one time. He said, "I'm against legalization of marijuana. Um, this, uh, I'm against legalization of marijuana uh, uh, to tax it." And I'm like, "Well, but that might, you know, I don't understand that." question though because you know we're wasting so much money in the criminal justice system you know why not just legalize it and tax it you know uh, wh- whatever kind of tax you put on it I, um and like i said i'm against taxes like you are too but they're going to tax marijuana if it's legalized i mean we know that's going to happen but so i guess my question is, would, it, would it not be better to do that than to leave it as it is yeah if it puts less people in jail if it yeah. breaks up fewer homes that is definitely something I would vote for. So let me go a little bit further with that with you. Um, like I said, I think our drug laws are so draconian that the Reagan administration, what they did in the 80s, uh, was just, we spent billions in the war on drugs is, with our sense, losable. You know, I've seen people that have been arrested for, um, and I'm not, uh, please don't pivot with them. A proponent of going out and using heroin or crystal meth or something like that. But I've seen people that got arrested for, you know, a simple possession of crystal meth or cocaine or heroin. And then they get a felony mm-hmm. or slapped in, and slapped in jail for a year and their life's ruined. I mean, is that the right way to go? Or, I mean, should we try some kind of alternative before we, you know, slam the, you know, hammer down on somebody for something like, for making a mistake like that? Now, I'm not. Uh, your audio cut out again. Sorry. Paul, I'll come in one time. <laughs> talking about, um, um, yeah, you know, sl- slamming the hammer down on somebody. I don't talk about somebody breaking in people's houses and committing violent crimes and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, Enforcement, at least for marijuana, has been the worst outcomes for for people Mm -hmm. definitely some of the other drugs death and you know just you know absolutely wrecking their mind has been you know a problem but the issues that we have with drugs and 
the people that abuse drugs, those are health issues. That, uh, you know, right. And I'm not making excuses for when those health issues turn over into criminal acts, such as, you know, breaking and entering or stealing to get fixes and such. Um, but just for the, the possession, the use and all that, that, that should be uh, solved through health care. Because people don't realize that, uh, and I think you just which, and correct me if I'm wrong. If what you just said, let me say that uh, addiction is, is is a um, it's a disease uh, that needs to be treated as such instead of you know because when you lock somebody away for like I said first time offense and you lock them away for a year and they they got a felony you're just creating a revolving door in our prison system. Yeah, once you have a record, it's harder to get a job. Uh, you have problems getting licensed for you know i think like 150 some maybe occupations in alabama that are licensed and it's, yeah um yeah it's it's definitely ruining their lives it ruins my life. i mean it, yeah it really does um what our, our state government um do you feel that, uh, and uh, I'm sure you know somebody who's, who's uh, ran for the um, house that you follow um, our bills and stuff that's go up. Does it not seem to you that we are wasting our time on stuff that that we should be better? We should be looking at the bigger picture. <laughs> it, um, you know, if they didn't write any new laws, <laughs> that would probably be a good thing. So uh, when you talk about west, wasting time in the legislature, I mean, that's probably better. Every every law that they, they write reduces um, individual liberty and gives them measures to um, enrich themselves and re enrich friends. Where do you stand on a, um, a lottery? Well, I, I think it's a regressive tax. and I agree, I agree with you on that. It affects the, the poorest of the poor. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not pro-gambling, but if, you know, we're going to say that gambling is not outlawed, it, it shouldn't be a, a monopoly that the, the state controls through a, a lottery board. Okay, I'm I'm following what, what you're saying with things like the marijuana industry. We should not be creating another government bureaucracy yeah. in in these things right here. Okay, um, but do, do you think that the people should have the right to choose in Alabama whether gambling is legal or not? Should they have that ability? Yeah, I, I mean, anyone should Instead, choose if, if they want to gamble or not. That's that's up to them. Right now, the gov our government continues to step in and stop it, mm -hmm. and and they continue to deny the people the right to choose whether to gamble. And if it's voted down, fine, it's voted down. But let the people. I mean, it's, we like I said, we're a government of by and for the people. Well, so, are we are we choosing what their choices are, with only limiting them to a lottery, or are we just saying you know that we're going to legalize gambling in the state of Alabama? Well, yeah, they're just doing the lottery. See, I, I'm. Of an opinion that uh, all gambling should be legal. Um, if you want to bet on a football game, if you want to go to a card card game, uh, you want to go bet on the horses. That you know, to me, gambling is gambling is gambling is gambling. In my opinion, um, I don't think it should be outlawed. Um, that that is so. This and you can't legislate morality, um, and because people think that gambling they often do, you know, they often do. You're right. Um, that you, I mean, you're exactly right. Uh, they and do that. The syntax uh, proposed on marijuana is is legislating morality. Yes, it's legislating morality. I mean, I, I get what you're saying with that. Um, you know, I, I, but it's just you know, it's just something I think, I think that, that it's time that we've moved past that we can, that this should be decriminalized. Um, but you know. Uh, um, Sorry, get off the thing with the lottery. Uh, but yeah, I think gambling, you know, should be done anyway. Uh, I think the people should have the right. Um, you mentioned something about the 
government bureaucracy that we have in the state. Um, do you know Alabama has um, the 15th largest bureaucracy of any state in the nation? Uh, I did not know that, but um, it's actually not surprising. You know, you know, we're one of the poorest out there. It's, it's in last and everything, and we have the 15th largest bureaucracy. Um, you know, um, we're creating more and more jobs in the um, what is it, the public sector for 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 people on the state payroll. I, I forgot what the numbers was all my head, but it would be astronomical. I think it was like 20 something percent of the state worked for the government. Um, that's just yeah. that, that just you know blows my mind that we have so many people on the government. Um, payroll. Um, so tell me about if Elijah makes it to the House of Representatives, what is going to be his agenda, his first bill? What is he What is he going to do to try to improve the lives of Alabamians? I'd like to suspend and repeal the gas tax. You know, when we gas tax and have an automatic increase on it, uh, these, <clears throat> you know, these are also regressive when it's harder or more expensive to drive to work and drive home. You know, I'm lucky enough to work often from, from my house and I don't have to drive at all, but that's not uh, something that uh, is a luxury that everyone has. So, you know, groceries go up. Yeah. Gro <laughs> groceries go up. Um, yeah. And, and you know, basically the, the value from working goes down when it costs you more to get there and get back. Um, yeah, I was d really disappointed when uh, Governor Ivey signed that um, signed that law into effect. Uh, uh, you know, 10, 10 cents. That, I, I was very disappointed on that. Um, um, do you have any other bills that you think that was important? That should happen in the state. Do you think we should eliminate we should eliminate uh, taxes on medicine and groceries? Yeah, you know all of these um, taxes on things that people can't do without: transportation costs, fuel, um, medicine, groceries. All of those those end up being regressive taxes, where the burden uh, to fulfill that requirement is unfairly burdened on the poor um do you think that and this is one thing that i've that i've always said that i am against we should have a property tax because to me that means you're just renting your property if you own your property i shouldn't be having to pay 500 dollars a year to own this property um of all of the taxes that they could propose a property tax may be the most palatable because that is what uh, government is. It's a t territorial monopoly um, on the use of violence and uh, protecting property is what uh, the government should be doing. If you have a, a land dispute between you and your neighbor or um, you know, like how would you want that resolved and and what's the value for them maintaining your property records and saying that yes it is you that owns this house it seems much more fair than um you know you go and working all day and then they take take an hour of your time for nothing you know that's that, that's 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 a good answer on the property tax. I I, 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 I like that. Um, that made it. Uh, that made, that made more sense. That that made you explain it to him in a way that, that that made a lot of sense. I can understand that now. Um. Uh, the um. No, past... I mean, getting away with it would be totally fine with me. But um, of all the taxes, it's just the most palatable. I think. And let me ask you this right here, because I, I don't want to go back in, you know, some of the things I want to go into. Um, you know, we're in a situation now that, 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 that we can't get out of it. Um, you know, Social Security was the um, greatest Ponzi scheme ever created. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, but you know, it's just a situation now that we're in there. Uh, what, what, it, it, I don't know how much you've studied it or not, but 20, 33% of our federal budget goes to Medicare and social security. Um, what do we need to do? I mean, is it when did you try to curb the wasteful spending um, to save this? Because this could fix me bankrupt. And there's going to be people paid into it for years. They're not going to see a penny. No, I couldn't. I couldn't tell you. Um, you know, and hopefully <laughs> that won't be an ant. You know, a question that we have to answer at the Alabama State House. Um, you know, these programs, people have. Um, you know, become reliant on them. And mm -hmm. you know, they, they were promised something that they paid into, you know, we can't, uh, you know, we can definitely try and do things different for the future. Uh, my, you know, we've, we've moved away from defined benefit plans and well, you know, mostly in, in the corporate world that uh, pensions have been replaced by uh, 401ks and, you know, it's a defined contribution plan rather than the defined benefit. And uh, I mean, that's. If, if I, you I get think to, we, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. If you get to Montgomery. Mm -hmm. I will. How do you, okay. When you get to Montgomery, <laughs> are you going to go in there, which I would be perfectly fine with this, with the mindset of, all right, this thing has not worked. It's still not working. I'm fixing to blow the whole damn thing up. Um, I'm gonna. They're gonna hear me every day, uh, raising hell on everything they do that is uh, you know, against taking away, you know, individual freedoms and liberty. Or are you gonna be more of a, um, you know, a silent majority or silent, you know, fighter? Well, I'm. I'm asking the citizens of District 10 to trust me as their representative, and I am going to represent their needs and their concerns to the state house. And, you know, I, I think we need someone down there that is arguing for solving problems with less government. And um, I, I don't hope that I am the raise hail person down there. Um, I, I hope uh, working together with, with both parties, both major parties and uh, that, you know, I, I hope I, I create friends down there. That uh, I'm glad to hear you say that because so many of our Democrats and Republicans, do, you know, 40 years ago when I was coming up, these guys were friends and they worked across the aisles and to reach, you know, and now it's just not like that no more. So now your first race, tell me about it. Uh, 2018 uh, was the first time I I ran for office. Same what, same same. What made you, I'm sorry. What made you decide to do it first? Well, it needed to be done, and I was there. So okay, um, <laughs> great answer. Um, so I spent half the time just getting on the ballot. Um, it was I don't know two or three months. You know, going out knocking on doors in the evening and on the weekends. Sometimes it was raining. Sometimes it was hot. And uh, so you were old fashioned politic and door to door. Well, I, I wasn't even really politic and I was just trying to get my name on the ballot, you know, okay. asking people for um, just the right for, for libertarians to, to be aligned later on. And, you know, libertarians aren't, very numerous uh anywhere and uh but there was many people that helped me get on the ballot and um i did you know raise some funds and print some flyers got some yard signs out there um, how much would you be able to raise 20 2200 dollars um, okay you got a little bit of money and you know like that was mostly people just trying to th <laughs> throw money at me i wasn't really going out there and asking for money very hard and um i got a whip behind me this time uh, my campaign manager has uh been encouraging me often to uh, go out and ask for money and i'm i'm about ready to do that we got i mean the worst thing says no yeah 
<clears throat> so uh 2200 bucks and you know i i think i got all of the things that i knew what to spend money on you know business cards and signs and um uh, i even got, got some billboards there at the end oh facebook ads something like that um i really just i didn't know how to spend any more money than that and you know it's kind of kind of odd when you look over at what the other campaigns are doing and they're doing you know oh, a million dollars a hundred thousand dollars um yeah. and um so anyways i i'm glad i got a you know a different team or a, you know a bigger team this this time um i also ran in 2022 which um you know i it was not the perfect year for me to run but uh alabama libertarian party had gotten on the ballot with a significant really significant push um with well, let me ask something before you get too far ahead uh how many votes did you get or percentage wise in 2018 um uh, i think it was just a bit over five percent um, okay i don't remember how many votes maybe 1100 yeah five percent that's i mean i mean yeah that's well twenty two hundred dollars and running against the establishment i mean yeah okay yeah. I, I would i would be happy with that but i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you um, no, that's, I, that's all right i cut my guests off so in 2022 so, yeah. mm -hmm. 2022 i i didn't raise a dollar i didn't spend a dollar i just um yeah it, it wasn't the the perfect year for me i had some other stuff going on uh but i still got like over three percent of the vote um just just being there and you know maybe that was some people that knew me from before maybe it was just people that were tired of voting uh r's and d's um but yeah, what i is, found is, is in and in, 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 sorry if you remember again is in when the libertarians run especially in alabama what i've seen um they're gonna get i don't care if they even campaign right they're gonna get three percent because they have so many disillusioned Republicans that they're going to get about three or five percent of the vote just mm -hmm. being on it. Um, you know, um, one of my friends uh, that I talk to all the time, I don't know, Mark Lewis, I think. Um, I don't know if you yeah, know him. I know the name. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Mark talked pretty good bit. And he actually, he ran for, uh, I think, the House Senate or the Senate in Mobile. And he mm -hmm. campaigned, um, you know, and he got 10% uh, of the vote. Um, wow. That's a very good know, job. And, and imagine if he'd had a hundred thousand dollars in that race, you know what could have happened. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead, finish up. Tell me, tell me the story about uh, 2022. Oh, I mean that was it. I was, it, um, my so, name was on the on the the paper, but I, um, okay. I didn't so, have the time or. The... What happened with the the guy who won? So he essentially rented a room from said he rented a room from somebody's house that lived in the district and he lived outside the district yes so um david cole had um he was the winner last in 2022 and he uh -huh. got something like 54 percent of the vote um he was running in the republican primary and uh, one of the other republican primary challengers or you know candidates was Anson Knowles and Anson Knowles let the Madison County uh, Republican Party know that you know hey there's there's an issue with his residence and they didn't they didn't seem to mind at all and then they kicked Anson off the ballot um, after he had paid a qualifying fee oh um, wow are you serious they kicked him off the ballot after he paid a qualifying fee because he brought up the fact that this guy. Well, no, I mean, they, they, that wasn't the reason, you know, the reason they gave was that he was too friendly with libertarians. He had been back and forth um, between, you know, supporting us and supporting them. And you know, I mean, he's ride the line and there's many places that we overlap uh, policy wise. Um, but, you know, I mean, there's, there could, be democratic libertarians um because we overlap there a lot too but yeah anyways um yeah anson had brought up first the uh the issue and you know they ignored it and sometime maybe october um there was a news article that was written about it and 
this reporter had been like casing the joint, you know, taking pictures of him walking his dog at the other residence, you know, the residence is not inside the district. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it, it all came out in the wash event eventually when, uh, you know, we got through depositions and such, but he had, yeah, signed some type of lease agreement for a five foot by five foot area in a friend's house. And uh, so you, and you, you contested the, um, how would you you contested it because of where you lived or how did that exactly work uh, yeah i contested his qualifications for the state representative and <clears throat> you know he he asked for the case to, to be dismissed because you know once he's seated in the house the house decides uh who and who isn't their membership so so that they're not um so so outside parties such as the judicial branch or the executive branch uh can't make uh, changes to the, the legislature which which is i think probably appropriate that they don't have undue influence on the membership of the house but uh we did get uh to do depositions through the the judicial system and um we deli you know packaged up our um our evidence and sent it in there to the the state house and they didn't pick it up during the legis the uh the regular session and they also didn't pick it up during the specials um session so um i was just gonna let it go I, you know i i thought i lost the apathy and corruption or you know and um it was just out of the blue uh the Alabama attorney general filed criminal charges against David Cole for simply voting in the election and maybe also the primary. So still not his qualifications as state rep, um, you know, just being a voter in the, in the election uh, was what the charges were against or, you know, what the, what the charges were for. And uh, yeah, it just, happened all out of the blue i think within a week he had resigned and uh, yeah here we are with a special election I mean, I saw next year. let me ask you a tough question yeah. that you know that people probably uh, would wonder and um you know i like the tough questions I, but don't think i don't start getting hostile interviews I, I, when we cut I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about a lot uh, and i got another question i'll ask or, I'll, or something next i'll tell you what, when we cut too what made what compels you to feel like you need to just take this battle? To, to take the battle on on what? On contesting the election. Well, I, we we have laws here in in Alabama, and you know one of the the like hardest parts for libertarians and third parties to get started is the election laws and for them to be disregarded by one of the major parties. And in fact, the, you know, preeminent party in Alabama, um, it's, you know, at least we should, we should try to, to, uh, hold them accountable. So this was not a personal thing on your behalf. This was a thing on getting the right thing done and yeah, making I, sure that, integrity of the election laws are held up yeah I, I mean <clears throat> it uh, a special election you know i'm planning to do better than you know my three percent last year um but i think it would be a, a big change if a libertarian got elected in this race you know like something that you know i'm going to prepare for but I, I think it i think it would be a shock for anyone uh, this wasn't, uh, you know, anything personal. I never met David Cole. I you you know, had no probably, vendetta against him. He's probably a really nice guy. Yeah. He's a doctor, a veteran. Um, you know, he has family. I never wished for him to go to jail. Um, you know, because uh, somebody uh, that I was discussing with this, and when the first case came up, uh, who didn't know anything about it, um, they made some kind of comment or was alluding to the fact that. 
it was just a you know a, a vendetta against the guy you know and i said well you know i'll ask him during the interview um you know but you know um why why uh contest the racist so, but you know let's not like a rush to judgment on, on this right here uh you know pass judgment on somebody before we find out you know for case uh that so i mean you sound like from what i'm gathering from you uh you're your man that feels like that hey we have laws here uh you know we should abide by these election laws uh in order to maintain them in the integrity Right. I mean, because if we don't have the integrity, how can we trust, you know, how can we trust the laws? And and it would be like a terrible situation if the laws only apply to the parties out of power, you know, where. <laughs> well, you know, what's really bothering me about the Republicans is, mm -hmm. is you know, 20 years ago, they were all Democrats and they switched to the Republican Party um, and they were probably Republicans. Anyway, there was, you know, but back in those days, you had to be a Democrat. And now they're making it a thing. Um, if you uh, don't support a Republican nominee, you can't run for six years. If uh, they just pass something that if you take money from the Alabama Education Association, mm -hmm. you will be kicked off the ballot. Um, they are consolidating this power uh, that I think is, is wrong. Um, uh, 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 that... You know, uh, say that guy had libertarian ties. Well, you know, what's the difference in what, a Democrat switching midterm to go be a Republican? You know, I, I don't like this power grab by the, the um, executive committee. It's what's going on right now in the Republican Party. Hmm. I don't know yeah, if he was yeah. aware of that, but they are grabbing power. Because they're consolidating, hmm. you know, their power almost to pick their handpicked people to run the government. I mean, isn't that something like the Politburo does? Yeah, it doesn't seem like a very uh, free and open election system. If uh, you know the, the the party leadership is like basically being able to oust individual members. Um, that, that so we have like, another. Law. Hmm? I'm sorry. Go ahead. We have another law here that I that I think is wrong and I wish to be challenged. Um, it, we're a pro closed primary. Mm -hmm. If you vote in the Democratic primary, you can't vote in a Republican runoff. Or if you vote or vice versa. I feel like I should be able to vote in any election that's up there. I'm not I'm not terrible terribly upset about the closed primaries. Um, you know, libertarians choose their candidate through a uh, convention process. <laughs> Uh, or an executive executive committee vote um, that we have primaries is um, you know a benefit to to voters. Um, it's a cost to taxpayers. That's it's not funded by the Republican or Democratic Party. Um, although that is that is um, you know all that they're doing is is picking the major party candidates. Um, that it's closed, you know. I mean. You could have something way more, um, I don't know, undemocratic than that, you know, um, you know, where you have super delegates or something for yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the candidates. So um, I, I understand where they go the, the closed primary. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of it but I just don't think it's like the worst thing that's that they've implemented. Um, the Yeah. I like, I like the fact that you're open-minded on things that, that, you know, some, so many people in politics, you know, they're towing this company line and, you know, that's just the way it is, but you seem to have a open mind of, okay, I may not be agree with this, but you know, it's, I got a big, bigger fish to fry. So does that make sense? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Maybe the last ten years, I've been like v became very comfortable saying that I don't know, and um, it's given me a world of relief uh, that I'm not, you know, needing to be or trying to be um, the, the expert on everything. There's going to be, you know, plenty of people that I'll, I'll have to listen to um, and you know, talk with. 
And the sorry, I'm getting in the. Uh, tell me, um, tell me, what's your campaign strategy this time? How are you going to go about winning this race? Well, I have a lot more help this time. Uh, the Ans Anson Knowles that uh, we previously talked about. That's uh, was a libertarian and then a Republican and. Oh, I think first he was Republican, then he's Libertarian, then he's Republican again. Um, right now he's a Libertarian, and uh, I'm getting to use him. Um, I get the benefit of knowing him, and he's helping me run my campaign. Um, he's got a wealth of knowledge where we can reach out to uh, get more volunteers uh, than I've had before, and um, also raise money. And, you know, we're we're going to do mailers we're going to do um, events and it's going to be a, a much bigger strategy than i and campaign than i've done before are you going to go do the old-fashioned door-to-door knocking to get on the ballot i'm i'm going to have to um we have to get about 800 signatures of folks that live inside of district 10 to sign on that the just ballot. seems so unfair to me that you that somebody to get on the ballot you have to get you know so many signatures um uh, it's i mean it, it's definitely unfair it's you know when you go to the ballot they're like yeah you can vote for whoever you want to out of these two choices <laughs> um and yeah. They, the founder they, said that was the that was would be the demise of the two the two party system would be the demise of America or something or to paraphrase that. Uh, the last time that we had retained ballot access statewide, where we had gotten on the ballot and then had won enough votes to stay on it the next time, was two thousand, and in that legislative session subsequently. Um, they changed the retention percentage uh, up to 20%. And I think yes, that was... we had retained previously, and I'm not sure where the, the marker or the measure was, but I think we had gotten like 18% um, to retain ballot access. So then they moved up the, the goalpost to 20% for the next election to retain. And, you know, like that was the greatest thing that they could think to do um, you know, with no other, you know, no greater pressing issue to the state legislature than to make sure that they don't have to have competition on the ballot. And, so, and I think I don't care if it's libertarian, communist, whatever. If you know, if you pay your money, you, you know, we should be able to have um, people should be able to get ballot access. Um, so, all right, so let me see this: when you out here and you start campaigning, what are you going to do? What are you going to tell the voters? What's your pitch that you're different than what they're getting and why they should vote for you? Well, I, you know, I, I thank you for the compliment earlier about, you know, being open to ideas and, um, you know, not, not trying to have all the answers, but humility is one of the, the issues that I'm trying to run on is that, you know, I, I'm, I'm open to working with Democrats and Republicans to find solutions to, to bring about change and especially when we can lower the size of government um you know we have uh, a contentious basically <laughs> partisan divide um that we don't need to have and and i i think it's actually s somewhat recently that you know we've um basically demonized every other political point of view than our own. And I, I'm able to, you know, empathize with a lot of, a lot of uh, people's point of view and their backgrounds and how things in, in government hit them different. You know, I, I'm hoping that, you know, voters can see that and know that I am, um, you know, uh, you know, I'm not trying to, to, to beat anyone down. You want to give the voters 
a choice to go a different route mm-hmm. because we've already seen that the route that they've been go- we've been going on is not working. We're not getting a return for our money. Mm-hmm. You want to give them an, an alternative. Yeah, this other people are not giving. I am. I, I, and I know it's it would be awful scary to have, um, you know, an untested party, you know, s- start becoming, um, you know, gaining power or political influence. <clears throat> you know, that as things get worse in the country, it's going to be harder to to you know pick pick the unknown. And um, I, I think I have my work cut out for me. I, you know, I'm going to have all the help I can get, and I'm going to make that pitch. So, um, like I said, I want to I want to uh, ask some things up for cut, but tell me or tell the voters. Um, one thing they should know about Elijah Boyd that they don't know and tell me, you know, one thing or tell me why definitely they should vote for you. One thing they don't know. And it could be something unique that, you know, uh, you, you, you have a pet turtle or something, you know, <laughs> some, you know, tell me something that, you know, that people should know that's unique about you. unique about me man i i don't know i i just feel pretty regular um you know i and i can see that about... i can relate with you i mean I, I you seem like you know i, I think people will relate well with you uh, um you know worried about the opportunities for my children you know what you know how easy it's going to be to find stability and security in the rest of their life you know i you know i'm pretty good now you know i and my kids are good but is that gonna always be the case and um you know and i don't think it's the case now for everyone Uh, there's, there's plenty of people that are um on the on the outside looking for stability and security and you know, I just absolutely abhor when it's the government that's been the cause of those problems because me and you are responsible for that. You know, when we need to go vote out the people that are doing this. So is that when I see that is the question of why people should vote for you uh, over the other one? Do you think um, that was? what I said uh, that you can connect with them better than what these politicians can would that be the reason or do you have another reason why they should vote for you over the I won't let them down I'm going to do my absolute best they'll always be able to contact me and I will always listen Uh, representing the district will be my responsibility and um that's gonna you know come first over libertarianism Uh, whenever i can i'm going to advocate for smaller government and and i think the smaller government allows individuals to be the grandest version of, of themselves elijah um Talking with you, uh, <clears throat> I can see that you are a um, straight-talking man, and I feel that you are an honest man. Well, thank you. And that you are, I mean, I, I just can get that vibe for, from you. Uh, I hope um, you can get enough voters out there to see that. Um, I think that's all the questions I have for you. Is there anything else you would like to ask Ed, before we go? Well, um, if you're wanting to find out more about me, if you want to contact me, if you want to sit, if you want to help out, because um, I do need it, you can go to electelijah.com. That's my website. Um, Chris, I thank you very much for having me on the show. Um, I've appreciated uh, being able to review your, you know, 
your previous episodes on your podcast. I think you're doing great things um, and necessary. I, things. I really appreciate that. Roger Boyd, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you.